And we are here with the semifinalists of the 2019 Pro Chess League season and the Atlantic Division qualifiers. That would be the St. Louis Archbishops back for the second year. Welcome back to St. Louis team. Uh, I say welcome back, although you have an entirely new team from last year, except for your manager, Mike Kummer. Mike, tell us, uh, how does it feel to be able to return to San Francisco for a second year in a row? Uh, well, it's, it's definitely awesome. It's, uh, it's an experience like no other. I mean, this should be the future of uh, chess, where uh, people are actually cheering and having a great time watching the game instead of just sitting there, just observing the moves. It's really a great fan experience, and uh, we're just happy to be back and uh, ready to uh, settle unfinished business. And you're in the same bracket as Armenia, who knocked you out of at least the first place contention last year. Are you happy to get that revenge match going right away on Saturday? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, uh, 100%. I mean, that, that's more important than even winning the uh, world championship this year. We got to knock those guys out. They made fools of us last year, and it's not going to happen again. And that's why we got a whole new squad. We left the rest behind, and uh, we brought some winners this year. I love it. I love it. So guys, if you don't win this year, sorry, you're off the team. I think you know what's going to happen. But actually, I need to ask you, more important than the World Championship, Fabiano, would you agree? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, apparently I, I need, I, there's a good chance that I'll be off the team next year if I, if I don't play well. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we, we'll see if that's a, uh, an actual threat that might come or follows through with. But Fabiano, let me ask you, I mean, you're used to playing classical tournaments against 2800s, world championship matches that just a few people are watching. Um, does it feel a little bit like, you know, going to the playground, playing an, uh, a, an event like this? Yeah, I mean, in a sense, it, it, is, it is more fun than playing a traditional, you know, classical tournament where there's a lot of stress and a lot of preparation. And here we can sort of let loose. I mean, the, I still take their games and results very seriously, but there's more room for creativity and for experimentation. So that's nice. Yeah, I think you actually played every single possible game you could have played this season. So yeah. I'm guessing this was not just an ob obligation. You seem like you really enjoy this league. Yeah, no, last year I, I had a lot of fun, but there were um, a lot of commitments to tournaments, and I was trying to fit it around, like, the candidates. Um, but this year I, I had a lot of free time at the start of the year, so I played, I think, every match or pretty much every yeah. match. Yep. So, <laughs> And, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun for me. And Mike, uh, we just talked to the Armenia Eagles team. They're bringing their own computer mice with them. As I understand it, maybe you are as well. Is that true? Yep, yep, yep. Me and Julian just had an adventure to a Best Buy. We bought the, uh, the Trinity mouses, the best mouses on the uh, market for uh, Nicholas, Benjamin, and Fabiano. They're all going to test them tonight, get used to them. And so Hake's got nothing on us with his uh, precious little mouse. So we got it going on. Well, let me ask International Master Nicholas Theodorou. Um, it sounds like you're going to be using a brand new mouse. Uh, it's a little strange to change equipment at the last minute. Are you going to be able to have enough time to practice with this mouse? I mean, it doesn't really matter uh, to me what uh, I used to play. But uh, I mean, I prefer playing with a touchpad. But uh, I don't think playing with a mouse is going to be a problem, especially since it's the Trinity mouse. <laughs> Well, there's a couple people up here who have experience playing team matches that are outside of the Pro Chess League. Fabiano's played many Olympiads. And Benjamin, correct me if I'm wrong, did you play in the Pan Am Intercollegiate Championships this year? Uh, yeah, I played in the Pan Am this year. And uh, does that kind of team experience relate at all to the Pro Chess League? I mean, the matches are taking place a lot more quickly, but did you learn anything from that experience that might help you in the Pro Chess League? Uh, yeah, well, playing for a team is always very special. I also played for the Dutch national team. And I've played in many leagues in Europe, so um, playing for a team is obviously different and it motivates me more, I would say. Uh, but the Pro Chess League is something completely different because it's online and so many viewers, so it's something I'm definitely very excited for. And actually, Fabian, I want to compare, for example, your Olympiad team experience to this one. At the Olympiad, most of your teammates are world-class players in their own right, and they can take care of their own preparation. But are you being relied on a little bit to prepare your teammates here since Suffice to say, I think you know a little bit of theory in chess. <laughs> uh, I haven't been asked so far. Um, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll, if anyone wants any advice, I'll, I'll be happy to give it. But I think all the players on the team know their openings pretty well. So um, 
I don't think that my help will really be needed, but of course I'm always, always there to assist if necessary. Actually, let me ask you about that. Let's say you had some great novelty that you've been sitting on, and I'm guessing you've got a few of those, but you knew that novelty could help, for example, Benjamin, Julian, Nicholas, any of your teammates. Would you reveal it to them at the risk of not being able to use it in a super tournament? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you look at my own games, I also, the openings I play are usually um, not what I usually do, so. All right, well, thanks for the honesty. Um, Mike, besides these special computer mice that uh, you just got at Best Buy, uh, were you looking around the aisles for any other special weapons you could uh, purchase to help your team? I wish not to divulge that. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair, that's fair. Uh, we provide the noise-canceling headphones, by the way, in case anybody is wondering. Um, uh, Benjamin, your experience uh, with the Dutch national team and with the Pan Am intercollegiates, um, those experiences, you're very closely monitoring the other boards because you're playing slow classical chess. You don't always have the ability to do that in this tournament because you're getting into time pressure pretty much right away. But do you have the ability to peek around at the other boards quickly and does that influence your play at all in the Pro Chess League? Uh, yeah, I don't think I'll have much time to look at the other boards. Um, honestly, playing in classical events, I felt that sometimes looking at the other boards would distract me um, because I would be looking at my teammates like, what are you doing? Um, but yeah, so it will be good to just focus on my own game and um, yeah, so that's just what I'll do. And I have a question for the board for Julian Perleko. You did not play any games this year in the regular season. I believe you're the first player to come to a uh, playoff match that has not played in the games at least one of the semifinal matches. So how did you find out that you got picked and were you surprised at all? Um, yeah, I was a little surprised. I think I think it mainly had to do with uh, uh, with who could play the top three boards um, as far as the fourth board is concerned. But I mean, I, I just hope to hope to do well. And th all those other weeks that you were not playing, were you following the matches pretty closely? Um, uh, Honestly, not not really, uh, but I, I I tried I tried to pay attention when 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 I could. Well, I know that Mike, you you run a, a, a tight operation here, so it was ultimately your choice. Tell me about what went into your thinking when you uh, signed Julian up. Sure, sure. Well, we wanted to bring the uh, young guns to uh, San Francisco this year, so Julian definitely fit the uh, profile. And without uh, Wesley So uh, competing, we really had to switch things up, and so I. And Nicholas, I mean, he's a machine, so we had to have him in the lineup. And uh, Benjamin, his uh, roommate at SLU, was just the obvious choice. And he's great at the, uh, the three plus two, or three plus one, if it gets down to that, in the uh, gauntlet. So, and obviously, Fabiano, I mean, uh, we don't need to express how happy we are to have him at the, uh, at the table here. And uh, so, the Young Guns is what we went with, and uh, they're going to they're gonna succeed. And a question for both Nicholas and Benjamin. When you guys accepted your scholarship to St. Louis University to become a Billiken, was this, uh, the, the, the chance to be in a pro chess league team part of kind of the, the recruitment package or anything, or did it just happen more organically than that? Uh, it just came with it, I would say. Um, but yeah, um, like obviously when we came to SLU, it would be, we thought it would be great if we could like win titles for SLU, but yeah, joining the Pro Chess League is also pretty cool. And I already knew about it, uh, so it's not like what it was not a deal maker for me. But yeah, it's very it's obviously very nice to play for the team. Uh, Nicholas, is the Pro Chess League followed in Greece at all? Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, also quite popular in Greece, uh, but it wasn't. Uh, I mean, in any way, a determining factor for my choice to join SLU. But I'm obviously really happy to be here. Uh, we just heard from the Armenian Eagles that should any of them beat you, Fabiano, they get some sort of special gift. That's meant to give them extra motivation, but does it also now give you extra motivation knowing that you can deny them happiness? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm, I don't really take much pleasure out of denying people happiness, but... <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have that Fisher mentality. But I, I still am fully motivated not to give them what they want. How many points do you think you'll personally need to score to push your team over the top in the semifinals? Um, well, I, I think I've been underperforming a bit throughout the Pro Chess League this year. Like last year, I think I did much better, but uh, the team has been doing great. And even though I haven't been playing at my best, I mean, the team has, uh, has been carrying a lot of the weight. So, uh, but I mean, still, I'm, I'm hoping to, to do better this time. 
and we have a more macro question from someone in the audience. Uh, his name is either Guy or he just wanted to be anonymous. This is signed Guy, uh, but I'll read it to you, Fabiano. Uh, Fabiano, uh, do you believe you will ever break 2,900? I assume that means in Fide Classical. Oh, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> what about Magnus? He's getting closer than he ever has before. Uh, well, closer than he has in several years, I should say it that way. Uh, I mean, I s still think it's unlikely because it does get more and more difficult. Uh, and, and he's kind of, he's gotten to 2880 before. I mean, the level that he's showing, like, the last few months of this year, and also in 2014 when he, he got around that, a similar rating, is kind of unreal, but it's, uh, I mean, when you're already playing top players and you lose like two points per draw, it, it kind of gets difficult. And I was, I, I remember how difficult it was when I got, okay, not to that rating, but to a rating which I haven't reached since uh, 2014. And, and I was like playing uh, Rustum with Black and I, I, would, <laughs> I would lose two points for a draw. I was like, this is really tough. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's not a reflection on, uh, on his strength, but I, I don't think that, that uh, it's realistic for anyone to reach that rating, at least for now. Yesterday, there was a very strong rapid tournament at the Mechanics Institute. You were part of a three-way tie for first place at the end. You also had to play your friend, manager, second, Christian Carilla. How, how was that experience playing somebody that was so intimately involved in your training sessions leading up to last year's World Championship? Yeah, it was, it was kind of funny because he played a line uh, and we had discussed it. And, and I told him that this line is bad. <laughs> <laughs> and then he played it anyway. And then he was surprised that I played the move that I told him was the refutation of this line. <laughs> was he being obstinate or he just forgot? I think he might have forgotten because we had played a blitz game in this line. And then afterwards I was like, no, you can't. I mean, I checked it and this is, this is bad for black. But still, the game was a draw up to the last like five seconds uh, when he blundered. And I mean, yeah, yesterday was tough because I, I, I wasn't used to playing over the board with a two second increment. I haven't been doing it in a while. And once I got down to five seconds, I was like, my time just doesn't go up. I mean, the time that it takes for me to move a piece is the increment. So. Um, so it was kind of the last, uh, well, the game against Christian and the last game against Hammer were both pretty nerve wracking. And I've been asking about music so far today, but I'm going to ask it in a little bit of a different way with your team. This year, you do get to listen to whatever music you want to as a means of canceling out the noise. Um, but instead of me asking what you're going to listen to, what would your entrance music be if you were allowed to have that? For example, uh, in American baseball, when a relief pitcher comes into the game, they play his favorite music as a way of like energizing him. So if we had entrance music for you, name the one song you would like to be part of your introduction at tomorrow's event. Um, we'll start with Julian. You're the youngest, I believe, on the team. So maybe uh, you can let us know. Not the youngest. I'm the youngest. You're the youngest. Yeah. Okay. Well, pick up the microphone, Julian, if you would, and tell us uh, what would you like your entrance music to be. Um, Maybe we can make it happen. You never know. I, I. I don't know. I don't know why I'm blanking. <laughs> no idea. Okay, we'll choose it for you, Fabiano. I, I've got I've got Fabiano's answer right here. <laughs> How about uh, Hulk Hogan's uh, "I Am a Real American"? <laughs> and mine would be a uh, Def Leppard "Animal." <laughs> All right, Benjamin and Nicholas, do you have anything for that one? Uh, I, th <laughs> I think I would go for uh, John Cena's Andrew song. Okay. Yeah. And Benjamin? Um, I don't know, like anything that would get us hyped up, I guess. Um, yeah. This is a new thought in chess. We'll have yeah. to work on this, <laughs> I can see. Uh, Mike, what is the hardest part about managing this team? Actually, it, this year has been a real uh, blessing. I mean, last year and the year before, I would be like, hey, you got to give me manager of the year. I'm working so hard. This year, it's like Fabiano's like, I ask him, hey, can you play this week? He's like, yep. Wesley So, can you play this week? Yep. All right. Job's over. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been very, very lucky this year. Uh, question for you, Fabiano. Tomorrow you're going to play four games. For part of the games, uh, based on the design of the setup, you're going to be facing the audience, and they're, you know, they're allowed to drink and jump up and down, do whatever they want. For part of the games, you're going to have your back to the audience. So what do you think you're going to prefer better, to feed off the energy of the crowd or to be a little bit uh, mute to that experience? I actually might prefer having the audience in front of me, because when I play 
online, I have a tendency to mostly look at the other games that are going on. <laughs> um, so I would be a bit embarrassed if people see that I'm not actually looking at my own game, but I'm looking at everyone else's <laughs> games. Um, but that, that's also what I do in, in classical chess. Like half the time when it's on my move, I'm walking around looking at other games. I, I don't know why, but um, when it's not my turn to move, I get bored with my position. <laughs> and I start looking at everyone else's games. And do you think that chess as an eSport in an atmosphere like this has a future? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, it's the, uh, the biggest audience is, is the online audience. Um, and especially for chess, it's a natural fit. Does anybody else here follow any eSports on Twitch? Or have, has anybody else been to an eSport event? Not at all, huh? Too focused on chess? <laughs> Mike, what about you? You're a guy who uh, has a big internet presence. Oh, uh, no, I follow, uh, you know, basketball, pretty much. Good enough, okay. <laughs> um, so, Mike, what do you think you're going to be doing culturally with your team throughout this weekend during the downtime? Oh, you know, we, uh, oh, yeah, we, we, hooked, we, uh, we went to a Chinese restaurant. We we're obviously in Chinatown, and we got some uh, good fortunes with our fortune cookies, uh, last night so julian got uh got one that says he will win a nice reward or award all right i got one that oh i'll expect unexpected news i walked down the street and i saw robert hess last night and said uh hey did fabiano win the uh the tournament big shocker he did because he's like the best player in the world you know and then uh benjamin got got the best of all what is it? You're gonna step on the soles of many countries. <laughs> <laughs> okay, actually it was soil. That's not the way I read it. I, I think both actually work as an expression. Okay. Um, Julian, are you intimidated at all playing right beside the vice world champion and being his teammate? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what, what makes you so? I mean, is it... Uh, is, is it something that uh, you look up to him so much as a chess player, or is he just mean to you behind the curtains? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I, I've followed, I, I've looked at a lot of his games, and I, I mean, I've analyzed them on my own or with friends. Like, I, it's hard to even think of him as like a person, you know? It's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like this, uh, uh, just, I, yeah. <laughs> were, you, I don't know. were you one of his secret seconds for London? Uh, no. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see if we have any questions that the audience would like to ask the St. Louis Archbishops. Would anybody like to ask them anything? Alexandra Botez, what a shock. Let's have her ask an insightful question. Being from St. Louis, you guys already come from a city with a lot of chess culture. If your team would win the PCL finals, what do you think that would mean for fans back home? Yeah, celebration in the uh, Central West End, right? Yep. <laughs> we'll have a little uh, parade down the street, be partying at Brennan's, and uh, have a lot of fun, you know? Actually, that is an interesting question that we also asked the Armenia team. Uh, Armenia as a country often gets government uh, support or gifts or things if they win, but the St. Louis Chess Club is one of your largest benefactors. Perhaps we could say it is the benefactor of the team, but uh, have they offered you anything uh, if you win? Mike? Uh, we'll split up the uh, 20 Gs and uh, have some fun, you know? Okay, so just the official prizes, got it. I expect at least a team dinner coming from Rex. Uh, does anybody else have any questions I'd like to ask the Archbishops? All right, WGM, Carla Heredia? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I have a question for Mike, of course. Uh, so, <laughs> Mike, you are very energetic and I always see your passion for chess every time I go to the chess club. What has been for you to dedicate your life to work in chess and now to be around a, a strong players. When the club started, you know, started step by step and now you're here besides uh, Fabiano and other very uh, good players. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, just imagine if you live in St. Louis all your life and then they build this chess paradise. <laughs> like, you'd be insane not to go and work there. And that's a credit to, uh, obviously, Rex and Jeannie Singfield that built that, but to uh, Joy Bray and Tony Rich, who have been there from the start. 
and uh, really get it, really get it. So I couldn't ask to work for uh, more nice bosses. And you know what? I'm not a guy that, you know, would be giving out false praise. So that, that really helps a lot. And I mean, it's just, you get to just do your own thing there. And uh, chess paradise, it's like a playground. And uh, you'd be insane not to take advantage of, of such, a, such a great place. And if you haven't been to the St. Louis Chess Club, you got to go. 6,000 square foot, all about chess. You got to love it. It is fantastic. Of course, this weekend you can drink while watching the game. So a special advantage to watching it here. I don't drink on the job. <laughs> <laughs> and you're always on the job. We know that. Uh, we would be remiss if we did not mention the absence of Wesley So, who is playing in uh, Grand, Chess, Grand Chess Tour event in the Ivory Coast. Have you been in communication with Wesley at all? Has he offered the team any kind of good luck or anything? Uh, you know, Wesley is always going to be uh, following us, and um, he lives a blessed life, and we wish him the best. And um, I'm sure he'll be on, uh, on chess.com when he can, uh, you know, uh, you know, in the comments, like, go Bach, go Julian, and uh, be cheering on us. God, Mike is such an infectious personality and so full of energy. Fabiana, was there any thought of adding him to your World Championship preparation team? Maybe that would have helped. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I needed, I guess. Um, yeah, no, it, it's great to, to have Mike as a manager. Uh, he livens up the spirit a lot and, and is very supportive and very attentive and helps our team a great deal. Yeah. Well, yeah, to, to that... To that um, I can say this. I don't know if he actually read the email, but before he uh, he played Kramnik in the uh, candidates match, I did send him a, a late night email, 8 a.m. his time, and uh, gave him some very uh, encouraging words, and he knocked them out. <laughs> <laughs> Fabiano, do you credit this email with that win? Uh, to be honest, I don't really remember. I mean, I I, I must have seen it, but. Uh, the candidates was such a blur also. Yeah. So much was going on. And that game on. was quite crazy, as I recall. Oh, that game. Yeah. I mean, uh, like, at the end of the day, it was already past midnight. And, um, I mean, I was so happy to win, but it was also one of my the most exhausting chess days of my life. It was voted one of the top ten games of the year on chess.com. I can't remember the exact number. Uh, let me ask you, Fabiano, when a lot of other teams are being asked about your presence, they all kind of have the same answer, which is number two in classical doesn't mean number two in rapid. And of course, we all know what happened in London. Are you frankly just tired of hearing this comparison of your classical and your rapid chess? Uh, well, I, I mean, I, I, I've had some bad results, uh, but uh, I mean, I, I actually don't think I'm much lower ranked in rapid than, I think my rapid rating is basically the same as my classical at this point. It should so, be pointed out, you were one of the top performers in the entire pro chess league this year. No, I, I, I'm not unconfident in my rapid skills. Um, so, yeah, yeah I, I mean, I understand people might not uh, feel as much danger from me in rapid, but uh, I still think I can score pretty highly. Can I sum up his answer in one word? Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent summation. Uh, does anybody else have any questions for the St. Louis Archbishops? All right, fantastic. Well, that concludes. Well, actually, no, no. The commissioner had his hand up. Uh, yeah. What do you guys think about your chances if it goes to the 8-8 eight, eight tie? Are you shooting for that? Would you be happy about that? The commissioner clearly wants it. That was I am Greg Shahadi with that question. Mike, why don't you take it? It's all good either way. <laughs> I mean, clearly it's good for the league to have these sorts of things, but are you guys looking forward to a possible tie break? Yeah, I mean, I guess Blitz is even more fun than Rapid, so uh, yeah, if it comes down to that, we'll, we'll be ready and yeah. Well, the thing is, the format, if it goes to an 8-8 tie break, is that every one of you would have to be beat at least once. The road to victory would have to go through Fabiano. So it seems like the tie break format would benefit your team. Does that sound about right, Benjamin? Uh, yeah, I would definitely agree with that because, uh, yeah, Fabiano is very strong and obviously beating him for, uh, by any team, uh, seems to me like like very hard um but first they would have to go through julian uh, nicholas and myself so i think yeah we would have very good chance if it would come down to a blitz tie break okay well you guys work on that entrance music mike Cummer. okay maybe you can pick out a playlist Animal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so big Def Leppard fans, congratulations on making it this far to the semifinals. Ladies and gentlemen, your Atlantic Division champion, St. Louis Archbishops, and the 2019 Pro Chess League semifinalists. Round of applause, please.